Okay, so we're going forward now to Ephesians in our lectionary readings, and we come to Ephesians and uh, chapter 1, verse 15 through to verse 23. <coughs> and here we have a, a, a passage that is suggested, it's to the Ephesians, the Church of the Ephesians, but we know that this was a kind of circular letter going around the churches of Asia, and it may not necessarily have been specifically for the Ephesians. It's, it's, it's up for grabs, you know, you can decide by reading scriptures whether you think that's right or not, but certainly the scholars all have arguments about who it's, who it's to and so on. But we have a pretty good idea that uh, this is the Apostle Paul talking to the church in that particular area in that day. And Paul is... is is really encouraging the church at this time. Um, and, and he's specifically um, pleased to hear about their faith in the Lord Jesus, obviously, and their love towards all the saints. Now, you know, we get a bit hung up on this word. I want to just speak about it for a moment. But, you know, a love towards all the saints. Sometimes we can get into the idea that we can become saints to a degree where we are where we are Christians who do not sin. That we are Christians who um, have to be looked upon as saints from the outside world and maybe give this impression that we are in some way perfect now. But of course, what we're talking about here is that we become saints when we're covered by the blood, when we're covered and clothed in the Lord Jesus Christ, when we have come into faith, into Christ, and then relying on his righteousness, because he lived a perfect life and died for us, and not our own righteousness. So that's when we are termed saints, when we talk about other people in the church who have given their lives to God and really had a change, that their spirit has been changed and they have been born again by the power of the Holy Spirit, not just making a mental decision to follow Jesus or making a mental decision to be a churchgoer, but someone who has really been born again by the power of the Holy Spirit and changes inside. And this is a person we would call a saint, not because they've become a saint and not sin, because we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. And that's why we need a saviour, isn't it? But this word saint is just to distinguish between those who are born again, who are following Christ, who do have a love for the rest of the body of Christ, and have a real strong faith in Christ for their future. So they call them saints. And Paul says, I don't cease, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. So that with the eyes of your heart, heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you and uh, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints. So he's specifically talking to people who have been born again, who have, who have started to exercise faith in Christ. And he's saying, I'm praying that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Father of glory, so he's talking about the Father God, so that first person of the Trinity, Father God, and he's saying that, he's asking that the Father God, because we pray to the Father through the Son. We don't pray to Mary, we don't pray to Jesus, we pray to the Father. And that's really important. We don't pray to the minister. We don't pray to the, to the Word. We don't pray to the church. We pray to the Father. 
That's why Jesus taught us how to pray. He didn't say our mother. He said our father, who art in heaven. Our father, he taught us how to pray. Go to Matthew's gospel. Matthew's gospel tells us Jesus taught his <coughs> disciples how to pray. Very simply, a, f a prayer that, you know, you can then get a feel for how a prayer should be. And there's the Apostle Paul, and he's praying to the Father, who is the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. And God, uh, and Jesus Christ, always, when he went away on his own, and he prayed to the Father, and he asked the Father what he should do. And yet we know Jesus is our Saviour. But still, the Father God in heaven is who we aim our prayers to. And that's really important. And Paul, Paul asked for a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And remember, Solomon, King David's son Solomon, <coughs> when, he was, when he was in communion with God, and God said, what, what do you want? He prayed for wisdom. And he became the wisest man on earth and the most prosperous man on earth in many ways. And so Paul is praying for us to have wisdom. What kind of wisdom? Well, he's not talking about wisdom that the world knows, is he? He's not talking about that, the wisdom of the world, the kind of streetwise type wisdom. He's talking about godly wisdom. He's talking about the kind of wisdom that only comes through <coughs> the word of God. It only comes through the mind of Christ. And we're told that when we become born again, when we're filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, we have the mind of Christ. So whenever we gather together as a group, we all should be in consensus. We should all have a consensus of opinion about where we should be going as a church. Because as we get to know the word, then we begin to know and have knowledge of what God wants for us. That's how we pick up wisdom, by reading God's word. We, we don't get wisdom by reading all sorts of other things very quickly. When we read the word of God, we get wisdom very, very fast. And we ask the Holy Spirit to reveal what God wants us to know when we come to the word. We pray and ask God to show us what he wants us to understand and what he wants us to know. And that's how we read the word. That's how we gain wisdom. And, and obviously for the Apostle Paul, there was no New Testament then. It hadn't been written. So these letters were from the Apostle Paul to tell them. So in the same way, you can also get wisdom when you hear God's word preached. When someone preaches the word, you can get wisdom. If the word is being preached properly, you will gain wisdom through preaching and teaching. That's why God gave us preachers and teachers and pastors and leaders. People who have studied the word, people who have been in communion with God, people who have found the wisdom through the power of the Holy Spirit in us. So there is the word and there is the Holy Spirit. And they both need to be in balance. You know, the Word tells you to do all sorts of things, but if you rush out and don't listen to the Holy Spirit when you go out there, then you can get it wrong. Because God gives you lots of charges, lots of commissions in the Word. Okay? God gives you lots of commissions. And there are lots of charges in the Word that... that, that um, that motivate us to go and do things for God. But we also have to have the Holy Spirit to show us, to give us balance, when sometimes we've been a bit too literal with the word and haven't really listened to God, maybe not heard God really, his voice. We may have taken something too literal in the word and it's not quite right. And the Holy Spirit is also there as a guide to lead us and teach us and to keep us and give us balance.